So, Chris, I've got to ask you about Pete Thamel's article over at Yahoo Sports, and I don't have it pulled up in front of me, but basically it is discussing the, uh, and people say it's a foregone conclusion right now, but the idea that Ed Orgeron right, might not be the head coach at LSU next season. And he starts discussing the idea of James Franklin along with some other candidates as well. But uh, but he brings up Scott Woodward, the AD at LSU, as a big game hunter, right? The guys that he yep. brought into Texas A&M and, and who he has hired in the past when he was at Washington, he hired Chris Peterson as the head coach. He, he does not exactly go after the, the small hires. And, and I tweeted on Max Olson's uh, tweet earlier, just responded to it and said, all right, I don't know that Franklin would work. I doubt that uh, I doubt LSU would bring in Kiffin, uh, Hugh Freeze. Uh, I think I think you're I think I think you're wrong about that one. Uh, you you think why uh, would they not bring Lane? Why would they not bring Lane in? Tell me why you think they wouldn't do it. I think they prefer a coach that would not uh, stir up shit as much as Lane. Mm, but I, I, I don't could think be they wrong care about that. So no, no, I don't think they care. So I think I think I think you I think you grossly underestimate the state of Louisiana and what they're known for, <laughs> which is stirring up shit, Gary. You, you, ever, have a you ever been there? Uh, no, I've I've been down there. No, you're you're not, not wrong. A, not a whole lot of not a whole lot of laid back folks that that are just easy going and want to kind of stay quiet and hide. Okay, they okay. like to be out in front and they they dress a little wild and and they they grow their hair a little crazy and they 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 like to cause a scene. That's the, uh, and they the like Cajuns, to throw a party. Yeah, the Cajuns like to throw a party, and and Lane Kiffin, I yeah. believe, would be somebody that would be all up into a party. So he he would he would he would be my number one choice. All right, so that's that's number one. I brought up Hugh Freeze, but I doubt that that one's going to happen if for no other reason than the SEC does not want that to happen, and I'm sure they would. Uh, would, would well, uh, again, I, I'll say this: I, I do believe that this is a school. This is this is the one school. Well, Auburn's pretty good at it too. That we're the two schools, Auburn and LSU that have no problems telling the SEC that they can go properly screw themselves. I believe that if Freeze was going to get a job, it would have been Auburn. But that's that's I, just hang on, but that's 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 fine. That's fine. They don't have an athletic director that that's that's big game hunter. That's true. They went and got a small name. And that's true. Now the the names that I actually brought up in this were Jeff Halfley, uh, who is the Boston College head coach. And yeah, zero chance. And I brought up Mel Tucker, who has. So I this, like I like both those guys. Yeah, I, zero I, chance. Those aren't big game guys, dude. That's what that's what boring athletic directors to go do. Uh, you think a boring athletic director would go to Michigan State and grab a coach that's starting to have success? I mean, at, like Tucker, I think would be the almost a perfect fit. You might be right, and I like Mel Tucker. That's not what Woodward's going to He's going to go get a big name. He's going to go pay somebody $9 million a year. That's what he's going to do. Which means he's not going to get Jimbo because uh, you, you would have to go beyond 10 to go get Jimbo. Oh, no, but do we you don't even have, want we Jimbo? Don't, well, even, let's say Jimbo didn't lose the other day, and let's say Jimbo was the second-best coach in, in SEC. Okay? Let's say he, he didn't have the woes that he has right now, and he was the star that he was brought in to be. We don't have the money to compete with Texas A&M. While LSU is a massive school, Louisiana is one of the poorest states in the union. And we don't have that kind of fan base. We don't have that kind of money. Yeah. We can't compete with A&M. We're not even close to compete with A&M on a dollars-to-dollars standpoint. So is there anybody else that you could think of that would be a big name other than like an Urban Meyer or something like that? That that would be somebody uh, I mean, that you would look at. The two big names were were Lane and Hugh. I do think it's going to be an offensive guy because I think people in Louisiana are really, really, really sick of our offense being shitty. That's that's something that's frustrating people. Um, I'm sure if I put any time into thinking about it, I could come up with maybe I don't know three other names. But I, I just I haven't I haven't put any time into it at all. I you know this is this is one of those things where I I would. I would go because because it's not going to be my call because I would I would bring in Mel and I would give him a hell of a look you know what I'm saying yeah. but 
but that, they're just not going to do that. I mean, it, that look, would, it, would, he's just not. LSU did bring in a former Michigan State head coach, and that seemed to work out pretty well uh, back 21 years ago. So, you know, that's all right. Well, if you're talking about Nick Saban, listen. As much as they're mad right now, at did you know that as of today, as of right now, after Saturday's loss, Crow Torgeron and 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 Nick Saban have the exact record at LSU, both with one national championship. That is interesting. That is interesting. I would imagine that, all right, has been there, I don't even know how long. Did it, 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 Nick Saban was there for one more season after the national championship, right? And he won it in yes. 2003, so he was there from 2000 through 2000. 2004. So five seasons. He has now been there for, at, do you count, 16 well, that's that's why that's why he's that's why he's there. If you're counting the win losses, yes, because that's why he was there. That's why he's got the same record in the middle of the seat. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That that makes sense. That makes sense. That's that's very interesting. Very interesting. I don't think that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, who who would you rather have as the head coach right now, Saban or or Coach O? Like, do you believe that there's a rebound coming? No. Goddamn. That's like the. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm with you. That's a that's a shit question. That's like ridiculous. <laughs> I don't even. Know. I should not have asked that question. That's stupid. No, I'm. So tell me this: like, do you think that this is way too early? Like, it, it surprised no. me that four games into the season or five games into the season, Dan was already writing the article that's basically an obituary for Ed Orgeron at LSU. Well, but we're we're already into this because we're projecting, right? Like, right. if he wins out, then we're fine. But he's got to. Here's the deal. If he wins eight games, I think he's safe. But the problem is, is you look at that schedule and you say, where are we going to get six more wins? And I don't know the answer to that. I, I really have no idea. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.